How's Doja Cat both blowing up and losing diehard fans at the same time, and what's Satan got to do with it? The singer has the number one song in the world right now, but from angry followers to a Stranger Things fallout, it turns out that Satanic Panic may just be the least of her issues. Hi, I'm a random person on the internet. You're a random person on the internet, and together, we're here to talk about Doja Cat. Now, losing over a million Instagram followers can't be easy, but Doja Cat just pulled it off. She's got people pissed, and it is coming from all directions. Some people are convinced she sold her soul to Satan, others are convinced that she should break up with her boyfriend, and she even found herself in the middle of a controversy involving her and Noah Schnapp, aka the kid who plays Will from Stranger Things. But the biggest beef of all wasn't between Doja and another celebrity, or even between between Doja and another person. It's between Doja Cat and her very own fans, and it has gotten personal. Hence the minus one million Instagram followers. Opinions range from Doja Cat's a terrible person who deserves to lose her career, to she's done nothing wrong at all and this is all just an elaborate troll. And as usual, I feel like the best discussion is held somewhere in the middle. So we're gonna go over the whole thing start to finish, and by the end you'll see that the real issues stem from a clash between Doja Cat's true nature and the way that she's commonly perceived. All this Doja Cat controversy has melded into a big ball of wibbly wobbly satanic panic stuff. But much like a cat, we're going to unravel the whole thing. But before we talk about that, let's talk about me. What if I told you that you may have missed four uploads between this one and the last video of mine that you saw? For those of you who may not know, I just started a new channel. That channel will be home to what I'm calling casual commentary. And you can think of it as just a very stripped back version of what I do over here. A very stripped back version. In fact, I'm pretty much just talking freely over there. No sponsors, no schedule, no script. Really, it's the perfect place if you kind of just want to hear me talk more often and about more things that are maybe a little too silly or a little too small for this channel. I've already posted four different videos over there about everything from concerts to cop controversy, so there's plenty to watch. This is all just for fun, so like I said, there's no schedule, but I can tell you that the next video is going up the very day after this one goes up, so head over there and subscribe if you don't want to miss any uploads. You can find the channel down below in the comments or in the description of this video. Also, the channel is not a cult. Can I, can I just establish that really fast? There's a lot of comments over there that lead people to believe that I have started a cult, but that's not, that's not what the channel is supposed to be. So when you go over there, can you just leave a comment that makes it really, really clear to newcomers that the channel is not a cult? I don't want to scare off new people, so I would really appreciate your help. Anyway, now that I promoted myself, it's time to promote today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Air Up. You know what I think we should all take more seriously? hydration. When it comes to drinking water, my friends and I are always sending each other reminders and threats because drinking water is always the right answer. And thankfully, Air Up is here to help. With Air Up, you get all of the flavor and none of the additives. So here's how it works. First, I fill my Air Up bottle with drinking water because it all starts with the healthiest drink around. Then I attach the straw and insert the special lid. Lastly, I choose an Air Up flavor pod, pop it on, and here's where the science happens. When you drink through the straw, an Air Up bottle transports water and air into your mouth. This air is scented via the flavor pod and your brain actually perceives it as flavor, which is a phenomenon called scent-based taste. So all I have to do is pop up the flavor pod to activate it and let the flavor begin. You can also deactivate it for an unflavored experience, depending on your mood. Air Up bottles come in a variety of colors and they're perfect for when I'm on the go. Air Up doesn't just help you drink more water, it keeps it fun with a bunch of flavors that you can choose from. So click the link in the description to try Air Up today. It's time to choose both health and flavor with Air Up. Now let's get into the video. So before we look forward, let's start by going back, and I mean way back. See, I think Doja Cat's pre-fame antics actually give a lot of insight into her current controversy. Even from the beginning, she's always had a personality that seems a bit more common among internet comedians as opposed to pop stars. Her debut single is a tribute to weed, as is the Doja in her stage name. Her unreleased music includes songs like Sucker Punch, which is an entire track about how she's going to Chuck Norris roundhouse kick someone, complete with a sample from SpongeBob SquarePants, like some sort of ironic icing on a meme cake. So with these lighthearted roots, it's come as no surprise that Doja Cat's initial brush with fame was actually a complete joke. 
Released in 2018, the rap song Moo by Doja Cat is such an utterly unserious track, I don't think there's a single genuine bar to be found. With lyrics like, I'm not a cat, I don't say meow, and the phrase, I'm a cow, repeated over 40 times, the song was impossible to take seriously, dangerously catchy, and most confusingly, really really good. Together with a well-timed and equally goofy video that's currently sitting at 126 million views, as well as one of the top 10 most viewed Genius Verified lyric explanation videos of all time, suddenly Doja Cat was everywhere. And if this Genius Lyric video was anything to go by, she wasn't taking this very seriously at all. My name is Doja Cat, I gotta acknowledge that. Before making this song, I've thought about changing my name for sure, but there is no way in hell that I'll ever be Doja Cow. But her say whatever for a laugh attitude only endeared her to her new fans even more. Now, this might seem like the start of a happy story, but a pretty big theme in this video is actually the difference between perception on the internet and actual reality. So while the internet gleefully declared Moo to be our song of the summer, it's worth noting that its success was fairly self-contained. Despite being later repurposed as a single and used to boost her sophomore album Amala, the song was more popular with Discord users than disc jockeys, and it didn't really make any waves outside the web at all. So one has to wonder, how did Doja Cat then go on to score a total of 8 top 10 hits, including 2 number 1 singles? Well, it turns out that Moo wasn't just lightning in a bottle, and in fact, it wasn't even the catchiest song that Doja Cat had up her cow pattern sleeve. In late 2019, most of the world was just blissfully living their lives, completely unaware that the global pandemic was just moments away. But as people enjoyed these last few moments in the sun before a flurry of stay-at-home orders ruined every single plan I had ever made that year, little did we know that something else was going to be spreading quite rapidly the next year as well. Doja Cat had just released her third studio album, Hot Pink. Now, even though her signature style of comedy makes its way into all of her work, Doja Cat's albums are largely populated with slightly more serious tracks. More straightforward and radio-friendly pop rap numbers, such as Say So. And Say So was about to change the trajectory of her entire career. If there's one platform where viral trends plus catchy songs actually can impact the radio, look no further than TikTok. Say So, an overwhelmingly pleasant song with disco vibes and cute lyrics, basically just the exact kind of music that does well on the clock app, and do well it did. Between the viral dance challenge and the relatable lyrics, the song wound up becoming the fifth most used TikTok song over the next year. Unlike Moo, this actually did wind up bringing in major offline success, resulting in radio spins and huge playlisting. And the following music video and Nicki Minaj remix were actually enough to push the song to number one on the charts, making this not just Doja Cat's first number one, but getting her and Nicki a Guinness World Record for being the first female rap duo at the top of the Hot 100 charts. This success lasted all throughout 2020, and the fact that we were all stuck at home now with a lot more time to stream music than we had before definitely helped cement Say So's place as one of the biggest songs of the year. Nobody could have predicted Doja Cat's rise from farm-based meme machine to pandemic pop princess, but she was wearing the new title very well. Gone were the cow print fashion nova fits and the homemade music videos doja cat's strong sense of humor and her head scratching quirkiness had been dialed back to more of a wink and a nod for her older fans sure you could still find her unfiltered on platforms like twitter or her instagram live streams but for the most part she successfully repositioned herself as a much more serious artist so i think at this point it became entirely possible to turn into a doja cat fan without checking out any of her older work, and therefore not realizing that at heart, she was still a complete troll. There was now a sharp difference between how she was perceived by this new pandemic and the way she conducts herself online. And I wholeheartedly believe that the perception versus reality conflict is at the heart of every single controversy that would follow. And trust me, there were a lot of controversies to follow. It seemed like every time Doja Cat unlocked a new level of fame, something from her past would just resurface and cast a bit of a shadow over things. Going back to Moo for a second, when that song went viral, people did what they always do, which is just scour her Twitter top to bottom for anything and everything that they could use against her. And as always, that's exactly what they found. A strange and previously unnoticed tweet from 2015 began making the rounds in which Doja Cat called fellow rappers Tyler the Creator and Earl Sweatshirt a homophobic slur. After the unearthing of said tweet, what followed was a bizarre circus of statements, retractions, and apologies which would become pretty indicative of the way Doja Cat handles all of her controversy as you'll see. We got a total of three statements and they basically represent the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're starting off ugly because the first statement she 
gave was so decidedly not sorry. Like, it can't even really be considered an apology. I called a couple people the F slur when I was in high school in 2015. Does this mean I don't deserve support? I've said the slur roughly like 15,000 times in my life. Does saying it mean you hate gay people? Do I hate gay people? I don't think I hate gay people. Gay is okay. I think if I had to rate this apology, I'd give it a solid uh, 0 out of 10. Like I said, she's literally not sorry. And I couldn't even read the tweet verbatim because she's still using the slur in her statement itself. I can't give her half a point for originality though, because usually when people get called out for doing something wrong, they do their best to downplay it and emphasize that they're not like this anymore. But Doja Cat actually used this one as an opportunity to tell us that she's said the slur more times than we could possibly know. So again, very new. And while she does highlight the fact that she was only 19 when this tweet was made, uh, her current statement doesn't do much to indicate that she sees anything wrong with it now, and Doja Cat's sardonic attitude and sort of non-statement were not gonna get her very far this time, because people were not having it. It got so bad that Doja Cat wound up deleting that apology shortly thereafter, and what followed was a much more traditional celebrity apology, the tried and true notes app statement. I've used horrible, derogatory, and hateful words towards people out of ignorance. I just want you guys to know that you're incredibly special, and I hold you dear to my heart. I'm sorry for anyone I've offended or hurt deeply. You all are worth love and support. No one deserves to be discriminated against for their race, religion, or sexual orientation in any sense. Already, this is better than the other statement, but it's not really a high bar since all she had to do to make it better was just say sorry. I don't want you to look at me as a role model. I just want you to hear my music and the joy that you take from that is the most important part. I love making music with you. Thank you for everything to this day. Now, as for why that statement was later deleted as well, I honestly couldn't tell you. In fact, the third one that followed it up was pretty similar. I apologize for the derogatory terms I've used in the past and no one should be discriminated against for their race, religion, or sexual orientation. I love you and I hope to make more great music Music with and for you in the future. Thank you. I guess the third time really is a charm since this apology actually remains. Also, keep in mind that she said the words I love you in this statement because it's going to come back up later. But anyway, this does beg the question, which one of these three statements is actually real? It kind of comes down to just how quickly you believe someone can go from complete nonchalance to a genuine apology. But it turns out that trying and failing with multiple statements was really about to become Doja Cat's thing. While the Moo era was marred by the all too common problematic tweets controversy, uh, Doja Cat found herself in the say so era facing a much stranger problem. Doja Cat denies stripping for white supremacists. I mean, if that's not a headline for the ages, I don't know what is. And having this kind of thing get published by the likes of the BBC while you currently have a song in the top 10 is uh, understandably not the best PR. But there's a pretty big difference between this controversy and the last one. Last time, Doja Cat was completely in the wrong. Using homophobic slurs, is homophobic, regardless of your intentions, and responding in an unapologetic way all these years later is just really disappointing. While she did eventually say sorry, Doja Cat definitely deserved the backlash she got there because, I mean, she brought it on herself. But as for this new story, it turns out that things were a lot less black and white. Let's start with a fact. Doja Cat did in fact hang out in chat rooms on a platform called Tiny Chat. In one of these chat rooms, she used the N-word. That's not up for debate, it's on video. <laughs> Is like a <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this in and of itself is problematic, despite also being pretty in line with her aforementioned propensity for randomly dropping slurs. However, this fact sort of began to morph and take on an identity of its own. Thanks to a mountain of anonymous and unsubstantiated claims from randos all across the internet claiming to have been in these chat rooms with Doja Cat, Doja Cat used the N-word turned into Doja Cat let other people call her the n-word. Other people turned into white supremacists. Hanging out turned into stripping. And before you know it, the new story is Doja Cat stripped for white supremacists in a racist chat room while they called her the n-word. And that is frankly just not true. It didn't happen. While aspects of this are obviously rooted in reality, the final product is just so far removed from reality, it just becomes a work of fiction in and of itself. But this was actually just the beginning of how wrong people were gonna get the story. Someone then unearthed a song in which Doja Cat used the phrase Dindu, which is a derogatory term that 4chan types try to use against black people. Much like the video chat room situation, this fact took on a life of its own, and it quickly turned into Doja Cat is mocking the death 
death of victims of police brutality. Again, that's not what happened or even close to it, and the song itself has nothing to do with that. The chorus is pretty obviously fighting back against the term and posing the question of how far we could come without being boxed in by offensive terms like these. And as a black person herself, Doja Cat has every right to explore things like that in her music. But it was too late, because we have yet another massive perception versus reality problem, and the perception was that Doja Cat is just a self-hating racist who mocks victims of racism and engages in racism online with strangers. And something like that is a bit too much to ignore. First came the text statement, which as you can guess did not last very long. Doja Cat starts with the elephant in the room, saying, I've used public chat rooms to socialize since I was a child. I shouldn't have been on some of those chat room sites, but I personally have never been involved in any racist conversations. Again, watching the clip, Nobody else in the chat room was talking about anything racist at all. In fact, it was literally just Doja Cat. She was the one blurting out that word in order to get a reaction out of people. Anyway, Doja continues to clarify that while she's biracial, she's not only black, but quite proud of her African heritage. Lastly, she mentions the song. It was written in response to people who often use that term to hurt me. I made an attempt to flip its meaning, but recognized that it was a bad decision to use the term in my music. She wraps it all up by telling her fans that she loves them once again, and she felt apologizes for upsetting anyone. Now, personally, I think this response is leagues above the way she handled things the first time. She actually apologized for the offense that she caused, but made sure to clarify the things that she did and did not do. And frankly, most of what people were accusing her of, she flat out did not do. In fact, I think that if people were just willing to be reasonable and admit that they might have misjudged the situation, this apology probably would have been enough. But this was the internet. Why would anybody be reasonable? You didn't think that was going to happen, did you? And therefore, this apology did not do much to regain control of the narrative. So, therefore, it was deleted and Doja Cat hit us with a take two. Or should I say take a hundred and two. This is what's been going on for the last three days. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. It's because I am movies. Hey guys. So in a 30 minute Instagram live stream where Doja Cat addresses the controversy head on while wearing a flaming hentai t-shirt, she shares clips from the 98 apology videos that she attempted to film before she came to the conclusion that the most genuine thing to do would just be to go on live and hash it out in real time. And you know what? It was indeed genuine. Doja Cat broke down everybody's points one by one, apologizing where necessary and debunking pretty much everything else. And you know, despite the goofy t-shirt and despite her previously meme behavior, it's pretty clear just from watching this that Doja Cat was gutted by the way people were talking about her song. To see a song, my song that I made connected to an innocent black woman's death is one of the most awful rumors that I've ever encountered. Um, I, I don't, I don't see in any way how that's okay to push. And she's right. This whole Doja Cat is a self-hating racist who thinks police brutality and people dying is funny. That narrative is a gross thing to do to anybody without proof, let alone a black person. Yes, Doja Cat has her flaws, but no, nothing she's done has ever called for that. Anyway, after that live stream, it was pretty obvious that Doja Cat was in the right in the situation. And so thankfully, despite it seeming kind of dire there for a second, this didn't really affect her career at all. She didn't deserve to lose anything over this. And even though that seemed very possible, she was able to talk through it calmly, stand up for herself, and come out on top in the end. Interestingly though, the YouTube recording of her Instagram live stream has 666 comments right now, which is almost like some weird premonition for what's about to come later, but that's spoilers. Anyway, I wanted to highlight these previous controversies before we jump into the current stuff for a couple of reasons. First of all, Doja Cat is a human being. Yes, she's very popular, but like all human beings, as you see, she's capable of handling situations in pretty much the worst way possible, and she's capable of handling them really well. The way she dealt with the slur controversy is embarrassing, and it shows the complete and utter limitations of her whole, I don't care about anything, everything is funny all the time, internet persona. But the way she shut down the chat room situation proves that she can in fact be serious when she needs to be. Another reason I wanted to highlight these situations is because it it really shows you that fans 
are fickle, especially online. In fact, why are people who are just ready to blindly believe the worst about you with no proof even called fans at all? But whatever you want to call them, it turns out that they were about to be on the other side of Doja Cat's biggest falling out yet. After the chatroom situation in 2020, Doja Cat would find herself mostly controversy free for the following years. 2021 saw the release of her massively popular third album, Planet Her. While none of the songs made it to that coveted number one spot, the album debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and it spawned multiple top 10 hits, including the raunchy rap track, Need to Know, and the syrupy sweet SZA collab, Kiss Me More. At this point, it was safe to say that Doja Cat was far more than a one hit wonder. Through years of hard work, good music, and being in the right place at the right time, she had officially cemented herself as a bona fide pop star. From Grammy nominations to the increasingly expensive music videos, it seemed like Doja Cat could sneeze and accidentally launch a new TikTok trend promoting one of her songs to the top 10. And you know what? It's the fact that she was now so secure in her position that really highlights just how overwhelmingly insecure she acts at times. So there's this little known TV show that you may have heard of called Stranger Things. Only one of the most popular television shows in recent memory, it served as not only a career renaissance for greats such as Winona Ryder and David Harbour, but also a launching pad for the careers of many a child star. And one of these child stars is one Noah Schnapp. In mid-2022, Noah took to TikTok to share private DMs that he traded with Doja Cat over his co-star, Joseph Quinn. Noah, says Doja, can you tell Joseph to hit me up? Wait, no, does he have a girlfriend? To which Noah responds, suggesting that Doja Cat reach out to Joseph directly. When Doja counters saying, I don't know his Instagram or Twitter, Noah sends her the Instagram profile and that seems to be the end of it. Now, there's a lot of things going on in this very brief interaction, but... I think my immediate question is, how the heck did Doja Cat not find Joseph Quinn's Instagram if Joseph Quinn's Instagram is literally just Joseph Quinn? Like, bruh, try looking? You didn't even open the search bar on the app that you're texting this kid on. Which is actually a good segue to my second question. Why are you texting a kid about this? Noah was only 17 years old at the time, so I'm really not sure why a 26-year-old Doja Cat thought that he was the appropriate wingman for his co-star, who was even older than Doja Cat. To be clear, Doja Cat was actually just asking a question, like, I don't think this is some Colleen Ballinger stuff going on here. But at the very least, I find it weird. Why reach out to Noah about this instead of, I don't know, the many adult co-stars on the show. Why not reach out to Joseph himself? Like, it's it's just weird. Anyway, I guess Noah thought it was weird too, or funny, or just something worth sharing, because as mentioned, he leaked these private messages to his TikTok. Now, I have to say, I generally don't condone leaking messages. It's usually a terrible idea. Someone's talking to you in what they assume is privacy, and then you take that privacy away from them without asking for their permission. But I will say this, the kid was 17 years old. I, at my big old age of 25, am not going to be DMing a child in the first place, let alone retaliating if that child chooses to share the conversation that we had with other people. Because frankly, you shouldn't really be saying anything to someone else's child that you wouldn't be comfortable saying in public in Anyway, but retaliate is exactly what Doja Cat did. And let's just say uncomfortable is an understatement. But the fact that this person, that Noah did that, like went and posted a private conversation between me and him is so unbelievably like socially unaware and whack and like, you know what I mean? Like, that's like borderline snake shit. Like, that's like, that's like weasel shit. I'm gonna make this really clear. You are dragging a child on your TikTok account because you don't like the fact that he talked about a conversation you had. There's just something very weird. It's like a very degrading and, and, um, it's just exploitative. It's like exploitative behavior and, and, it's embarrassing. It's like super embarrassing. Now, again, I definitely think that Noah could have just hit Doja Cat up with the, hey Doja, mind if I share these messages? I think they're funny. But also, I'm not going to shame a child or say anything that would make them feel less comfortable 
about speaking up about an interaction they've had with an adult, whether that interaction was good or bad, it doesn't matter. I just don't think there should be any secrecy here, really, but Doja Cat is acting like Noah violated the Geneva Conventions. In fact, it was already public news that Doja Cat was thirsty for Joseph Quinn, thanks to tweets like these, so I'm not really sure what he, like, revealed in this scenario. It feels like a weird, like, power play thing. And, and not saying that he has more, he definitely doesn't have more power than me and I don't have power over him and it's not like a power war. But there's like a weird, like, ego-y thing. It's like an ego-y thing. I think ascribing negative intent to what is most likely just a kid really excited about the fact that he gets to talk to a pop star is what's really whack. Like, I'm so sorry, but how were you exploited? If anything, you were trying to exploit your connection with Noah just to get to his coworker, who probably hasn't messaged you back for a reason. But yeah, she really tried to paint this as some sort of bizarre power trip, which is it's just a really weird thing to do. It's not that deep. It's just that he's like a very dumb kid. If he's the really dumb kid, but you're the one who got played, then does that make you the even dumber adult or like i promise you there's absolutely no way this was posted with negative intent have you ever been 17 i remember being 17 i don't care if i was famous or not if one of the biggest pop stars in the world messaged me thirsty over my coworker, i would think that was the funniest thing that happened to me that week and i probably would want to share that with everybody noah didn't post this with the caption like doja cat you're pathetic and you should be embarrassed. So kind of seems like you're projecting a little bit here. Maybe on some level you think this is the case. But anyway, I think the worst part by far was the fact that when Noah himself responded to this controversy, he was just like miles ahead of Doja Cat in terms of maturity. He posted a new TikTok using one of her songs in like a goofy challenge. And he put this in the comments. Guys, everything is all good. I apologize and I still follow her and love her music. No hard feelings. Honestly, this is just embarrassing. Not for Noah, to be clear, his response was great. It's just embarrassing to be shown up like this by a child. But yeah, overall, I bring this up once again to show that for every controversy that Doja Cat somehow manages to handle well, there's another in which she just makes it a thousand times worse immediately. And while Doja's reaction to this exchange was definitely raising eyebrows among her fans, it wasn't enough for there to be any real repercussions. And 2022 continued on mostly without incident. But um, it turns out that that's because all the incidents are about to happen in 2023. Let's talk about fandom names for a minute. Fandom names are a harmless, if not silly trend that's been common in the music industry for the longest time. For example, what is Beyonce without the Beehive? Or Taylor Swift without the Swifties? Or Weird Al Yankovic without the close personal friends of Al? Which is probably the greatest fandom name I've heard in my entire life. I will not think that low. I refuse to start a fan club. However, for eight bucks, you can become my close personal friend. That's right. So anyway, when Doja Cat begrudgingly posted a poll in 2020 asking whether her fans wanted to be called kittens or cubs, nobody batted an eye. And kittens it was, as you can see Doja Cat using the term a couple months later to promote the Say So remix. So while naming your fans is a pop star rite of passage, uh, that's probably where the similarities between how Doja Cat treats her fans and how other celebs treat their fans ends. To put it plainly, Doja Cat roasts her fan base all the time. Here she is in 2020, just a few days before choosing the name, saying, please try to be cool when you go to see people perform. A lot of y'all look like Couch Lint out there. And speaking of fandom names, there's Paper Magazine joking that Couch Lint would be a fitting one. Like, it's all so unserious. Here she is in 2022, changing her Twitter name to I'm Better Than You. Like, even though she was no longer releasing irreverent meme masterpieces like Moo, Doja Cat's humor style was still alive and well on Twitter. And honestly, for the most part, I find it funny. Like, it's not my stuff of humor and that I would call you the viewer couch lint per se but I see where it stems from and I think it provides a nice alternative to the mountains of other celebrities going omg I love you guys so much all the time you know if you're gonna give me something give me something different so even though this would have been strange for almost any other celebrity it was pretty on brand for doja cat when she wound up getting into a bit of an online altercation between her and some of her fans but unlike all the other times this time things are about to get personal a fan posted a seemingly innocuous message to the platform thread asking Doja Cat to say, I love you to her fans. Doja Cat responded with a similarly innocuous, I don't though. 
because I don't even know y'all. Honestly, it probably would have ended there, but uh, then Doja Cat got this reply from a different fan. And we don't know you, but we have supported you through thick and thin. Mind you, you'd be nothing without us. You'd be working at a grocery store making songs on Garage Band, Miss High School Dropout. To this utterly unwarranted message, Doja Cat responded with, nobody forced you. I don't know why you're talking to me like you're my mother. You sound like a crazy person. Now, I think this is actually a pretty interesting interaction because I feel like most people in Doja Cat's position would have just ignored the first comment if they weren't comfortable saying I love you back or even just bit the bullet and said it back to appease the fan. In fact, as I mentioned before, Doja Cat herself has said I love you in several statements before. She even tweeted it out just a couple of days before this. But the thing is, it's it's Doja Cat. Not even her own fans really bought that I love you, even before this thread's exchange, joking that she would probably turn on them shortly. And you know what? I have some pretty strong opinions about all of this. While I am no Doja Cat in terms of popularity, <laughs> Not yet, anyway. There are quite a few self-described fans of my content, or even just fans of my presence online in general. And honestly, if you asked me to say I love you to those fans, I don't think I would either. Now let's get one thing straight. I love that I can connect with people via my videos. It brings me a lot of joy and fulfillment, and I love making these videos and putting a lot of work into them and sharing them with people. While I've worked very hard for very many years to achieve this, I also feel very fortunate that I was able to do this as a job, basically. So like, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. But also, I don't know you. It's not humanly possible for me to know you. I think the last time I actually knew who every single one of my subscribers were, I only had 36 of them. And on the flip side, you also don't know me. I mean, you probably know a bit more about me than I know about you, because you can watch enough of my videos and start piecing things together. And you know, I am real in my videos. This is me. I think that's why people like watching them. But I am also real in the many, many, many more hours in which I exist outside of these videos. And that's something that you can't know unless you know me, which you don't. <laughs> so while I can't really love someone that I've never met doesn't bother me because I get to do this really cool thing instead where I just choose to have faith in you as a viewer. No, I have never met you, but I choose to believe that you are a lovely person with great taste in YouTubers. And I can tell from the comments that I get from people and the way people talk about my videos and I know my videos are being watched by the right people. And so I wouldn't trade that for the world. And I know these are people where if I did get to know them, I would grow to love talking to them. But for now, all I know is that you're just a bunch of fun strangers who like to watch YouTube videos that are way too long, but that's good because I like making them and I will forever appreciate the time that you spend sort of investing in my content. So for me, it doesn't even need to be love because what I've just described is a beautiful feeling. It's a very 21st century feeling, I feel like, and I don't know if there's a name for it, but I love that for us, more so than I guess I would say I love my viewers. So as for Doja Cat, I don't think she did anything wrong in this scenario, personally. People were very upset, but honestly, she wasn't being rude to the first fan, or even responding in a way that would attract hate towards that person. And the person who followed up, saying that without them, Doja Cat would be working at a grocery store due to being a high school dropout, that's just an extreme overreaction to Doja Cat's very neutral statement, and I don't blame her for telling that person to back off at all. This fan mentality that like your fave would be nothing without you is it's just so misguided let's be clear doja cat would be completely unaffected whether this person chose to stream her music or not and even in the completely unrealistic scenario in which all of doja cat's fans just up and leave that still wouldn't make her nothing because her worth as a person doesn't come from her success as a musician and it certainly wouldn't make it okay for you to shame her for having just a high school diploma or the lack thereof you shouldn't be doing that to anybody so like honestly if all it took was one interaction that that you didn't like for you to just turn on her and start harassing her in this way? Were you even really a fan in the first place? Or were you just an entitled person who completely overestimated their contributions to Doja Cat's life? Like real talk, everybody with this mentality needs a huge reality check. And so I kind of love the fact that Doja Cat was providing one, especially when most celebrities would be afraid to do so. However, if we've learned one thing about Doja Cat by now, it's that she can't have too many good takes in a row. So of course, what I believe were very valid points were immediately followed up by what I can only describe as 
Nonsense. In a totally unprompted threads post, she says the following. My fans don't name themselves anything. If you call yourself a kitten or kittens, that means you need to get off your phone and get a job and help your parents with the house. When fans very rightfully pointed out that uh, Doja Cat herself was the one who officially dubbed her fans kittens via the poll in 2020, she claimed that she came up with the name when she was, quote, an alcoholic teen. Besides the fact that Doja Cat was actually 24 years old and already famous at the time of that poll, there's just a lot of ridiculous stuff going on here. I get that saying things that she may not even mean just to get a reaction from people is like her thing, but implying that your fans are jobless just because they support you is really annoying. Like way to highlight that wealth gap in a world where it feels increasingly more difficult to get a job, but you get to sing and dance for a living. Oh, and wear designer clothing, of course. And as Doja Cat herself said, she she doesn't know her fans. So implying that they are like jobless and need to make themselves useful is just it's just wrong, honestly. But oh, she wasn't done. What should I change my name to since you don't like the term kitten? One fan very reasonably asked, to which Doja Cat replies with, just delete the entire account and rethink everything. It's never too late. Now, honestly, this reply isn't really reading as serious to me, especially coming from the same person who compared their fans to Couchlint. I don't really think she genuinely wants this person to delete their account. And so while I normally would find this actually kind of funny, in context with the get a job tweet, that that lighthearted nature is just kind of hard to find in this one. Doja Cat went on to tell another fan that they were creepy for having her full government name as their screen name, which actually, yeah, no, that is creepy. I feel like in general, we are way too liberal with the usage of celebrities' birth names. Like, have you noticed that? Like, sure, Doja Cat's name may be Amala, but like... I I'm not on a first name basis with Doja Cat. I understand it for people whose stage names aren't very stage namey. So for example, I get referring to The Weeknd as like Abel because that can be a lot easier just in a casual conversation. Plus he refers to himself that way as well. But for someone like Doja Cat who already gave us a name to use, I, I don't know, I think it's just kind of weird to Google her real name and then use that instead. But anyway, again, any valid points Doja Cat was making were quickly being overshadowed by the fact that it kind of just seemed like Doja Cat was lashing out at her fans for no reason at this point. And people started taking notice. Doja Cat started a war with her own stands. Now they're jumping ship. So what started off as just a few back and forth moments on the Threads app quickly spiraled into this media circuit. Doja Cat hates her fans. It got to the point where it was so widespread that even people who were completely unfamiliar with Doja Cat's history or communication style became aware of this scenario. And let's just say people were polarized. On the one hand, you had people who are only used to the more gratifying, less genuine approach that most celebrities have on social media. And so they thought that Doja Cat must have just had some sort of mental break and was now snapping completely out of character. But obviously, that was not the case. On the flip side, you had people saying, yeah, Doja Cat is taking a brave stand against parasocial relationships. Like she's playing 5D chess and getting rid of all of her overly attached fans in one fell swoop. And you know what? I also don't think that's the case because I feel like, like with most things Doja Cat does online, it was never really that deep. If you ask me, I seriously think that Doja Cat was kind of just being Doja Cat. And usually I would feel like that's kind of a cop-out characterization, but if we've seen anything through this video so far, it's that she is literally always like this. But yeah, for some reason, it seemed like this was just the last straw for her fans. They were in fact jumping ship as Rolling Stone put it, and Doja Cat found herself losing a whopping 1 million Instagram followers in the following weeks. People were shutting down their fan accounts, declaring that her career would be over. Like if the internet was anything to go by, you would think that her next single was about to debut with like negative 30 streams. And you know, intentionally or not, she really did manage to lose some of her more fickle fans. Fans that probably weren't really gonna do much for her in the long term anyway. Like she actually posted about the scenario on her Instagram story afterwards saying, seeing all these people unfollow me makes me feel like I've defeated a large beast that's been holding me down for so long. And it feels like I can reconnect with the people who really matter and love me for who I am, not for who I was. I feel free. So on the surface, this whole thing seems like it's just a big cautionary tale about overreaction. Despite making good points, Doja Cat overreacted to her fans, and then her fans overreacted to her, and then a bunch of people hit unfollow and she lost a bunch of followers, and then that was the end of the story and nothing changed because none of this matters at all because Instagram is not real. Like it would almost just be a funny story if this was the entire story. But it's not. See, while this is the version of events that some people are focusing on, there is something, or should I say someone, that we have 
totally overlooked. Someone we haven't looked at yet, but who provides quite a bit more context on why, for some fans, this might have gone just a bit deeper than a disagreement about parasocial relationships. To get the full picture, we have to take a look at none other than Doja Cat's boyfriend. Before there was TikTok, before there were YouTube shorts, there was only one short form content titan, and that was Vine. Now, of course, it's been over six and a half years since Vine was shut down, which, besides making me feel very old, makes it kind of hard to remember the who's who of popular Vine stars. But among said stars was none other than Jay Cyrus. Reaching over a million followers on the platform before its end, he was pulling millions of views on his most popular Vines, and was even nominated for a Shorty Award for Best Vine Comedian. Now, when the app was finally shuttered in 2017, YouTube experienced the now infamous Viner invasion that brought us the likes of the Paul Brothers and Lele Pons. But whereas most of the influx was directed towards YouTube, Jay Cyrus decided to go the streaming route and tried to establish himself on Twitch instead. He also released some music, as many people do, and honestly, his stuff was pretty solid. Like, it was all just very normal and unremarkable. The Vine career, the moving to another platform, the music, it's almost not worth mentioning, except for one tiny problem. This Jay Cyrus guy uh, kind of sucked a lot. So in 2019 and 2020, members of his Twitch community started coming forward and accusing Jay Cyrus of using his influence to mistreat his viewers and moderators. Now look, this is where things get kind of tricky. Like I said before, J. Cyrus did have his fair share of Vine popularity, but this didn't really transfer over to Twitch. So when these allegations came out years after Vine went down, it wasn't really like J. Cyrus was this big name streamer and a drama or controversy involving him would have gotten a bunch of attention. In fact, from what I can tell at the time, Nobody even really knew this was happening except him and the people in his community. And so because of all of this, there aren't like a million screenshots of every single interaction from this scenario. In fact, there are barely any screenshots. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say here is I honestly have no idea what this man actually did, but there are some clues. One remaining tweet from 2021, long before Doja Cat entered this particular picture, says he used his power and influence to mistreat women who watched his stream. The last count of women who came forward was close to 20. He destroyed a community of hundreds of people who trusted and admired him. Jay Cyrus should not be given a platform. Now, while this is very direct, it doesn't exactly explain what he did, only that he's done something wrong. But at the very least, we can confirm that this much is true thanks to another clue. In 2020, Jay Cyrus posted a now deleted apology that offers a few more details about what was going on. Now, I just want to point out that this apology is long. So if you want, you can pause to read the full thing like I did. But for this video, I'm just going to go over the important parts. Before anything, I want you to know there is no excuse nor justification for my actions. I was careless. I was greedy. I was ignorant. I was disrespectful and I was completely in the wrong. In a position of power and trust, I gave in to the temptations and attention of those who looked up to me. So right off the bat, Jay Cyrus admits out of his own mouth that he did in fact abuse his position of influence as a Twitch streamer to take advantage of the people in his audience. So right off the bat, I'm going to reiterate that this guy sucks. By engaging in flirtations and provocative personal messages with people that didn't just see me as a casual fun time, but instead someone they grew to love and trust from admiring them in the community where they felt safe and guarded, I am an adult and I'm smart enough to know better, but I was not strong enough or respectful enough to be better. No matter how lonely I am, no matter how desperate I was for attention, I was wrong. Consent is not a way out of guilt when you are using it for your own comfort and validation. It's weak and it's inexcusable. Okay, so as you can see from this sort of vague wording, this is where things get a bit murkier. Now, one of the few things I can confirm just from what he's saying here and also the people who were calling him out at the time is that it doesn't seem like Jay Cyrus has done anything illegal per se, but that doesn't mean he didn't do anything wrong. This whole idea of like dating your fans that he and some other internet personalities seem to think is a good idea is never a good idea. It's the kind of thing that like never ends well for anybody because the power imbalance between you, the influencer and a fan of yours is always going to be inescapable. And then also your fans did not really sign up and consent to be sorted through as you look for partners. All they did was express an interest in your content. So from what the apology 
strategy and the accusation from the timer saying it seems like jay cyrus was using his position as a twitch streamer to engage in romantic relationships with his viewers and or moderators which is already off to a very rough start but the apology is just getting started he goes on to explain how he was basically just using one woman for a relationship because it was convenient for him but then he dropped her on a dime the moment it wasn't so he then admits to leading a different woman on making her think there was a chance they could close the distance and have a deeper relationship even though he was lying and he knew that wouldn't be the case the whole time he even goes on to say he gave in to temptation on a physical level with a different woman which i think is him admitting to some sort of meetup i don't know but basically all this to say it wasn't enough that he was just combing through his twitch followers looking for people to be in a relationship with apparently once he was in these relationships he would proceed to be manipulative dishonest and selfish basically just using them all for his own personal gain which is like very predatory and weird. Now, he does apologize multiple times, and pretty thoroughly too, saying my words mean very little to many people, especially the ones I hurt, but I am truly sorry for all the pain I've caused, and for the mask of positivity and care I wore while being selfish underneath it. I deserve the stone's throne. I know this doesn't make anything easier for anyone, but my actions are my own, and I must own up to them. He finally wraps it all up with, I am not a victim of anyone but myself and my own mistakes. Thank you for reading. Now, overall, this has been pretty vague, as you can see, but a few things are crystal clear. This guy was doing very gross things. He was very aware of the fact when he was doing them, and he was using his Twitch platform to do these gross things. That much is a fact, and he is the primary source. So after this, he did what everyone who gets caught doing the same garbage does, and took an internet break before, of course, returning to Twitch sometime later as if nothing had happened. He now streams fairly often, seemingly without incident, and he posts a lot of clips to TikTok as well. I would say that for the most part, all of this was pretty much behind him, and for better or for worse, I haven't seen a single person come forward since that time around 2020 and allege that he continued to do the same behavior. So from what I can tell, he did in fact change his ways. It's behavior that he left in 2020, and that was pretty much the end of the story, until he started dating one of the most popular singers in the world, uh, somehow. As Doja Cat's mysterious new boyfriend, Jay Cyrus was now getting the most attention he had gotten in years, maybe even in his life. And with this influx of new attention, people did what they always do, which is scroll through your Twitter looking for anything and everything they can use against you, etc. Of course they found it. And so naturally, Jay Cyrus's really gross history of just kind of grooming his own fans for relationships that he could then manipulate them in, that all came back up and it was brought to Doja Cat's attention. But like with everything Doja Cat, this narrative, once again, spun completely out of control. So as we saw, there wasn't much remaining evidence giving us details about what exactly happened. So because of this, people started coming up with their own details, if you will. Jay Cyrus emotionally manipulated the women he was in relationships with, very quickly turned into... Jay Cyrus is a literal rapist, and a single Twitter user claiming that Jay Cyrus was quote, in mine and other minor at the time's DMs, turned into Jay Cyrus is a literal pedophile. To be clear, this person didn't actually accuse him of sending inappropriate messages to minors, and I didn't see a single person from that time period claiming that he did either, but people just took this and ran with it. People were also claiming that the man was a racist, but actually, uh, that kind of did have more of a leg to stand on. A cursory search will reveal these silly tweets, which people were making out to be racist, but a deeper dive shows that the real problem was actually happening way back on Vine. So part of Jay Cyrus's whole shtick was playing these characters, and in a very Shane Dawson-esque move, one of these characters was this. Call them all, because I just figured out what I'm doing for my glamour shots. Oh, you a bad. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a non-black person putting on a black scent and a cheap wig to mock black women is racist. And I didn't really see any acknowledgement or apology about this on his part, so I have no idea if he continues to support this stuff now or not. You ratchet, we real. You got your we from Goodwill. Girl, I got a rich man. And there's no bills, girl, please. So that's a decent example of something valid to bring to someone's attention. Since it's based off of his actions, but... Calling him a rapist pedophile, uh, not valid, since there was not only no proof of that, but also nobody even coming forward to allege that this happened to them. And this whole thing really overshadowed the more serious existent issues of grooming and manipulation. Now, even though you will find the odd comment with this extreme misinformation, basically anywhere where discourse about Doja Cat's boyfriend takes place, a lot of the people bringing this to Doja Cat's attention were talking about the actual facts here. And you know, it does pose an interesting question. What do you do if somebody brings it to your attention that your partner 
has done very bad things in the past. And uh, seeing as this is a nuanced situation and Doja Cat's approach is anything but nuanced, this was shaping up to be one of the worst ways she handled the controversy yet. Besides straight up blocking at least one of the people who came forward, Doja Cat replied to people referencing the situation in her usual manner. And to be clear, her usual manner is completely inappropriate and unacceptable when dealing with really serious things like this. I want y'all to read this comment and take it as a message. I don't care what y'all think about my personal life. I I have never and will never care what you think about me or my personal life. Goodbye and good riddance, miserable hoes. Ha ha. Definitely not the way you'd want to categorize people talking about fairly serious allegations here. Someone else told her to leave the man, to which she replied, implying that the two were literally hooking up as she was typing her message, which is way too much information, but alas. Overall, she really decided to dial up her unbothered edgelord persona to like 11, in which she cares a whole lot about making us think that she doesn't care at all. And while this is all good for silly songs about cows and harmless if not prickly interactions with fans about parasocial relationships. This is an insanely childish and counterproductive way to deal with people bringing up their knowledge or even experiences with her partner grooming and manipulating these women. Instead of saying, oh, he doesn't do this anymore, he apologized, I would never tolerate grooming. Any of the things that she could have said. Or even instead of saying nothing at all, she just tried to play it all off as some big joke. But all that did is make it seem like she's totally accepting of this behavior. And with the way that she's acting, how could you blame anyone for coming to that conclusion? This is where the sardonic attitude and the non-answers completely and utterly fail, and I feel like this is pretty much the lowest point in terms of Doja Cat handling her online controversy. Now, there are a couple of things to note. As we saw, Doja Cat's boyfriend did apologize and change his behavior. Of course, whether or not that apology is accepted is up to the people that he was targeting and manipulating, but at the very least, it's an important distinction that he's not currently using his position of power to do this at least not that there's any evidence of. So Doja Cat is not currently contributing to his ability to do these things. She's also not responsible for his choice to do these things in the past, especially as this occurred before the two ever met. So I don't think that Doja Cat should really be held responsible for him. Especially when some of the things that people are saying about him are not even true, and it's actually very egregious misinformation. However, you can still hold her responsible for her and her choice to react this way. I think treating the situation so frivolously and blocking people trying to speak out about it on your giant platform is not only disappointing, but it's honestly a much more legitimate reason to become disillusioned with Doja Cat than the silly parasocial relationship stuff we went over before. And this all happened before Doja Cat went on her tirade against her fans, so calling them creepy and jobless and seemingly just being really angry at them out of the blue, all of a sudden seems like it has a bit more context, doesn't it? So while I do think that some of her fans are just really silly, and probably a lot of the people unfollowing were doing so for very silly reasons, this is not a silly reason, and I'm not going to downplay her actions here, or anybody's choice to unfollow her over those actions. But now this kind of brings us to a larger question. We saw in the past with the chatroom controversy, see that like a seemingly big issue that turned out to be a small issue wasn't enough to impact your career. But now that we've had what seemed like a small issue turn out to be a really big issue, will this finally be enough to slow her down? Well, either way, we were about to find out firsthand. Usually, it takes some time to figure out whether or not a celebrity's antics are going to affect the performance of their work, but in Doja Cat's case, she was putting out work actively both before and after the fanbase fallout, so the answer is pretty clear. Things were definitely going to be affected, but uh, not in the way that everyone was predicting. So first, we'll take a look at how one of her songs did before the controversy. But of course, knowing Doja Cat, even though this was before the fanbase fallout, it still came with its own set of controversy because everything she does is just a problem, basically. Remember the two albums we've mentioned so far, Hot Pink and Planet Her? Well, Doja Cat took to Twitter to share some opinions about her earlier bodies of work. No more pop, she very plainly declared on Twitter one day out of the blue. She went on to clarify, I also agree with everyone who said the majority of my rap verses are mid and corny. I know they are. I wasn't trying to prove anything, I just enjoy making music, but I'm getting tired of hearing y'all say that I can't, so I will. Now, when she initially posted these, nobody was really mad about it, per se. There were definitely fans of her quote-unquote mid and corny rap verses, and they pushed back against this idea that her work was subpar just because she now wants to try new things. But overall, I think we could all relate to there being a difference in how you're perceived versus how you want the world to see you. 
So I feel like people saw that and they didn't really take it the wrong way. In fact, the general consensus at this point, I would describe as excitement for her upcoming more rap focused tracks. But then in typical Doja Cat fashion, once she had everyone excited, she promptly proceeded to piss everybody off. Planet Her and Hot Pink were cash grabs and y'all fell for it. Now I can go disappear somewhere and touch grass with my loved ones on an island while y'all weep for mediocre pop. Sorry, but the phrase weep for mediocre pop is really funny to me. But um, a lot of people did not find this very funny. Funny. Doja Cat went on to say she hadn't done anything personal and that she was cranking out digestible pop hits for children on Twitter to get into fights about. And then a bunch of people on Twitter promptly decided to fight her over these claims, immediately proving her point. Now, once again, this was polarizing because while there were quite a few people getting big mad, there were also a lot of people who were quite unbothered by this tweet. I mean, it had racked up over 100,000 likes while it was still up. So I think what makes the most sense is to look at this tweet from two perspectives. On the one hand, why it could have upset some people, and on the other hand, why others may not have been taking it very seriously at all. So reasons why this tweet may not be your favorite. First of all, it's just not very nice. Like some people may have a genuine strong connection with Doja Cat's music, which is kind of the point of music in the first place. And so for Doja Cat to jokingly or not write off that connection is actually just a big prank that they fell for, all in an effort to make Doja Cat richer. I totally get why some of her fans were bristling against this because it's it's just not a very nice thing to say. Also, from less of a hurt feeling standpoint and more of an objective look, uh, there are other people besides Doja Cat working on her music. Like, she does know that, right? Planet Her has a lot of work from producers like Y2K and Roger Shahayed. Amazing, talented people. Like, the album is just chock full of stellar production front to back. So to write off the work of a talented up and coming producer like Y2K or an industry legend like Roger Shahayed just for like a funny haha -ha moment on Twitter, it's, it's kind of super lame. So overall, I completely understand why some people were put off by the whole thing. But on the flip side, I also understand why some people were not. A lot of people find it difficult to take Doja Cat's statements about her own music seriously, and probably the person who finds it the most difficult would be Doja Cat herself. Like, her online nonsense doesn't just apply to things like the one time she had Elon Musk help her change her Twitter name to Fart. It's always been present in the way she talks about her music as well. I think a lot of people who were upset about this might have missed last year's saga of her ever-changing album genre, but thankfully Billboard did a really good job of documenting it. So first First, she states in an interview that her album was inspired by 1990s German rave music, before later tweeting, I'm not doing a German rave culture album, you guys. I was pranking the outlet that interviewed me about it. She then proceeds to say she's doing a straight R&B album with no rap at all, before saying she was lying and she's actually doing an experimental jazz album. I thought it would be funny to steer you into believing I was doing R&B because I knew it would work, but I'm doing experimental jazz now, honest truth. Of course, this was not the honest truth, as she then pivoted back to R&B with only one rap verse on the quote 34th song off the deluxe before finally disclosing that there would be no deluxe version of the album as there is no side a or side b the album will have eight sides and come in a cube shape skipping past the fact that cubes have six and not eight sides she then went on to share her actual final statement via a voice note in which she declared i am putting out a rock album it's going to have emo jams the name of the album is called rock out volume one the abyss 5000 so what pray tell is the moral of the story well, for one, I'm just kind of sad that we'll never get to experience Doja Cat's take on 90s German rave music or experimental jazz. I would very much be down for either of those, or possibly even both. But the other moral of the story is that honestly, if you take her seriously even for a second, then you kind of already lost. So when she referred to fans of her earlier work as weeping for mediocre pop, I kind of found myself in the second group of people who didn't really care about this at all, especially since lying about her music and making fun of her fans are like her two main personality traits this really this really wasn't surprising y'all and you know i've seen a lot of people ask questions like how could you even want to support her if she's like this and i guess i would answer the question with a question and say even if she was being serious about calling her old music mediocre does it matter can you be secure enough in your own opinion to where you don't need her to like the album for you. Technically, I was targeted by her tweet because I like a bunch of songs off of both albums. They're not mediocre to me, and I don't need Doja Cat to agree with me to validate or justify my opinion. Unlike many of the things I've covered this far, I personally feel like the renouncing my previous two albums thing doesn't really matter at all and was not nearly as bad as people were making it out to be. But let me know what you think about it because as you can see, 
there is no one right way to feel about it. Doja Cat is nothing if not a bit polarizing. And you know, instead of offended, I would say her statements left me more curious than anything. Between all the back and forth, the jokes, or whatever truth lay within those jokes, one thing was really clear. Her new music was going to have to be a lot different than her previous work in order to live up to all of this commotion she was causing online. So when the day finally came and she released her lead single, Attention, from her upcoming album, imagine my surprise when I clicked in only to find that it sounded exactly like all of her other music. Like, bruh. To be clear, I think Attention is an amazing song. Like, once again, Y2K and Roger Shahayed have provided amazing production. And Doja Cat, as always, sounds perfectly at home on top of the speed. And while she is certainly rapping more on this track than her previous releases, uh, it is still literally just a catchy pop hook during the chorus. So I really don't know where she was going with all of this. And I guess I sort of should have taken my own advice and not paid attention to anything she was saying in the first place. Now, as far as chart performance, as I mentioned, this happened before her fallout, meaning this really just performed like a normal single for her. It charted, it was received very well because people generally like her music. It was nothing much out of the ordinary, right? But then came the parasocial breakup, the boyfriend controversy, and the 1 million missing followers. So the real question mark was going to be the next single. And for better or for worse, its performance was definitely going to be out of the ordinary. Real quick, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Satan? Because he's about to play a pretty big role in this next part. See, I've mostly been focusing on Doja Cat's music and her online antics, but one thing that she's also very well known for is her fashion. Said fashion has always been avant-garde, but recently people have noticed that Doja Cat's sense of style had begun to change. And while changing styles between different album eras is super common in the pop world, some people became utterly convinced that these particular changes were the work of none other than his infernal majesty himself, Lucifer. And like Doja Cat's next single wasn't about to help her beat the Satanism allegations anytime soon, but that song was really just a cat catalyst for something that had already been growing for months ahead of time. So to understand the actual source of this Doja Cat is demonic narrative, we can look no further than her 27th birthday party late last year. Celebrities being accused of being part of an Illuminati conspiracy is a tale as old as time, and Doja Cat decided to embrace this as the theme for her 27th birthday party, inspired by the movie Eyes Wide Shut. The cake had symbols associated with the Illuminati, Doja and her celebrity friends wore their best robes and masks, and the whole thing was just one big tongue in cheek lean into the conspiracy theories. But when pictures from this event were released to the public, uh, I guess people kind of missed the tongue in cheek part, and so many people were up in arms that Doja Cat herself wound up responding in an Instagram live. I did a party that's based on the Illuminati because it's funny that I'm famous and I can utilize that as a meme. The fact that people were even mad about this in the first place confuses me more than anything because like, you do realize this is just an aesthetic, right? Like, you have to understand that. Doja Cat having a party inspired by a ritual ceremony from Eyes Wide Shut doesn't mean she was literally performing a ritual ceremony. Like, do you think a kid having a superhero-themed party means this child is actually secretly a superhero? The Eye of Providence on Doja Cat's birthday cake doesn't tie her to the Illuminati any more than the A on Little Timmy's cake ties him to the Avengers. But alas, not only were the conspiracy theories ridiculous, they were just getting started. Next came Doja Cat's fiery appearance at Paris Fashion Week, where she arrived in head-to-toe bright red Swarovski crystals. Aptly titled Doja's Inferno, this unsettling yet impressive look drew inspiration from Dante's Inferno and its nine circles of hell. And despite the fact that Dante's Inferno is a work of fiction, people once again took it as a work of fact. And this wasn't the only fashion choice that set people off either. She later debuted a plethora of new tattoos, including an eyeball, a spider, and a giant bat skeleton that people were all already pointing to as evidence of her dark affiliations, but what really set people off was the tattoo she got of an illustrated figure with a humanoid body and animal features. People were 100% sure that this was Satan personified. So. Needless to say, they looked pretty silly. When Doja Cat later revealed that it was just an illustration from an old book called Demonstrous by Fortunio Lissetti, and did not in fact have anything to do with Satan at all. But even with her very true statement that your fear is not my problem, you can still find people in the comments telling her to quote, find Jesus, or that Jesus is king. And you know, for people who leave comments like that, I, I kind of have to ask, what exactly do you think is going to happen in this scenario? Like, I'm just going to read this comment and then 
instantly become a born again Christian? I didn't even ask to be born the first time. Like on the real note, these fine God people better hope that I don't find them because if I do, it's on site. Anyway, I think the overreactions to Doja Cat's aesthetic choices really highlight people's tendency to lash out at things when they don't understand them. Doja Cat herself is extremely open about the things she's pulling inspiration from, but because people are unfamiliar with the source material, they're just assuming it's stemming from this place of deep darkness as opposed to a bunch of fictional stories. Again, Eyes Wide Shut is a movie, Dante's Inferno is a poem, and Fortunio Lissetti's Demonstrous is like a book of monsters for crying out loud. These obviously don't exist in real life. If you're familiar with the works she's referencing or even just aware of the fact that she's referencing works at all, it becomes really obvious that she's really just using this as a surface level aesthetic and it does not go any deeper than that. And she herself has not claimed anything to the contrary. But alas, people are people and so the Doja Cat is a Satanist Illuminati member conspiracy was in full swing by the time she dropped her next single, Paint the Town Red. And Doja Cat took the rumors and ran with them. See, she had already been having fun with the outrage as she responded to people leaving dissertations about her wayward soul with brief replies like, Slay girl, yes. And honestly, work. If you're calling me demonic honestly work because like i love that you ate for real i already loved all these responses due to their brevity but as it turns out she was saving the real response for paint the town red's music video and lyrics i said what i said i'd rather be famous instead in this video doja cat plays multiple characters from the grim reaper's sidekick to her bloody alter ego scarlet to a literal demon with black eyes in the lyrics she says fans ain't dumb but extremists are i'm a demon lord and the catchy refrain is about a woman who is not just a baddie, but the devil herself. The entire video is just like the exact last thing you would want to do if you were bothered by people calling you Satanist, and I honestly think it's kind of brilliant, I won't lie. Like the Illuminati themed birthday party and the all too obvious satanic imagery of Paint the Town Red prove that, as always, Doja Cat likes to take things that people try to use against her and flip them into some sort of quirky joke. And while this doesn't always work, as I mentioned before in the situation with her boyfriend, I personally think she really shines when she picks her targets right. The music video for Paint the Town Red is amazing, and the visuals become even more impressive so when you realize that Doja Cat contributed to the paintings used in the video herself. I think Doja Cat is honestly super talented, and when she gets out of her own way, the results speak for themselves. But uh, the results weren't the only thing speaking in this case. TikTok had an absolute field day with the Paint the Town Red video. They were just getting louder than ever in their adamance to prove that Doja Cat was truly a, just a minion of the Dark Lord. And I have never, and I mean never, seen so many people fail to get the joke. I almost feel like I have to give some sort of warning for the brain cells you're about to lose from me showing you this. Like this TikTok literally has a million views. This is not art. This is a scheme. This is a plan of the devil to twist and pervert the culture into thinking that this is cool. Hold up, wait, this TikTok is seven minutes long. How is that even allowed? That's not a TikTok, that's a vertical video essay. Sorry, I can make an hour long video about some pop star that doesn't know I exist, but I cannot be bothered to sit through this for more than like a minute. So let's just find another one. This one has 8 million views. I'm sure that's an indicator of quality. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. To whom ye yield... What? Does he actually even know what he just said? Because it, it kind of doesn't seem like it. His servant she are to whom you obey. Don't make those R2-D2 noises at me. And you know, if you could explain why someone's art is wrong without quoting a 2000 year old book, I might care, but like, you can't. So... I don't. Anyway, this last one we're looking at comes from none other than Big Nick, who can't wait to tell us all about how Doja Cat's recent antics are all just part of a satanic humiliation ritual. For those who have spiritual discernment, you can see that she had taken part in the humiliation ritual. And I really want to reiterate, uh, these aren't just random unhinged videos that I found with like two views. What you just watched has 12 million views. Over 1 million different people hit the like button. The irony of being this wrong while silent simultaneously feeling like you're smarter than other people for seeing the truth, it, it would almost be funny to me if it wasn't for the immense wave of secondhand embarrassment I feel instead. But despite this, I'm sure the conspiracy theorists are all just feeling like they got proved right. Because what happened next was not only totally unexpected, but actually a career first for Doja Cat. And what is probably the best PR that Satan has got in a couple thousand years, Paint the Town Red became the number one song 
in the world. Like, despite falling out with her fans over the parasocial issues, despite the more legitimate issues involving her shady boyfriend, despite the ridiculous and ridiculously viral trend of trying to expose her on TikTok for being just a slave of the devil, I guess, Doji Cat came out on top of not just every single controversy, but literally the charts as well. Even now, Paint the Town Red is still at the very top of Spotify's top 50 global chart, proving that despite the ups and downs, Doja Cat's here to stay. And that's because she seems to have realized the ultimate secret, which is that literally none of this matters in the real world. What people were predicting to be a new low was actually a career high, as this marked Doja Cat's first entry on the Billboard Hot 100 charts as a solo artist, even with all the questionable country music crowding the charts nowadays. And it all just conveniently happened right in time for her to announce her upcoming album. Now, we knew that an album was on its way, but as with all things Doja Cat, initial information surrounding this album was a bit unreliable. First, she announced that the title was Hellmouth, which would have been very fitting, but then she said it's not called Hellmouth, it's called First of All, and yes, I'm announcing the title right now. This was of course followed by My Album Isn't First of All, I'm Changing It, before the real name was finally revealed as Scarlet, along with the spooky spider on the album cover. But while the name was safe, the cover wasn't, and she announced the second actual cover just a couple of days later, ostensibly to ease confusion over the similarity between the first cover and that of a forthcoming album from the German metal band Chaver. You know, just... Just normal Doja Cat stuff. The album announcement was followed by another new single, complete with a music video featuring Christina Ricci. Side note, Christina Ricci, amazing. Like, have y'all seen Yellow Jackets? No spoilers, but just amazing. Anyway, I personally think that Demons is pretty much one of her best videos yet, and I'm confident that the Doja is Demonic crowd will understand that these are very obvious and blatant references to popular horror movies, and they will not chalk this all up to the influence of Satan instead. Oh. Just kidding, I wasn't confident about that at all. Anyway, after Demons came an energetic VMAs performance, a low-key promo single called Balut, and then a low-key controversy because Doja Cat didn't actually know what Balut means. You know, just normal Doja Cat stuff. And you know, Doja Cat's album will be released uh, the day after tomorrow, if this video goes up when I think it's gonna go up. So while there is a chance that you in the future may have information that I don't, I'm gonna make a few predictions and you can let me know if I was right. If the success of Paint the Town Red is anything to go by, I personally think that Scarlet is going to be Doja Cat's highest charting album yet. As mentioned before, her previous peak on the Billboard 200 was at number two. And while that was obviously a great achievement for Planet Her, something just tells me she's gonna reach even higher heights with Scarlet. And the reason for this, why it just seems so disconnected from the fact that she has lost a million followers and all these people were mad at her and that's an entirely separate group of people is mad at her It all just goes back to the central conflict which has been at the heart of this entire story and fascinated me the entire time Perception versus reality. I've said this before and I'll say it again Rich people don't go away no matter how many teenagers on the internet tweet at them Call out culture for better or for worse does not work and with Doja Cat We've seen the better and the worse when it comes to the situation with her boyfriend it really sucks that call-out culture has absolutely no effect. The things people were saying in that situation were valid and they were coming from a place of legitimate concern, so the fact that Doja Cat was able to just brush it off and move on as if nothing happened is frankly disappointing. On the flip side, when it comes to silly things that were never real issues in the first place, like say, Illuminati conspiracy theories, it's actually a pretty good thing that none of this actually matters or would affect her in any way. At the end of the day, it's all just so much noise. And whereas one thing is obviously serious and the other thing is not serious at all, if you find yourself in the middle and you were one of the people who was maybe just upset at her handling of the parasocial relationship of it all, maybe it's just a lesson more than anything. Because again, to lose this much of a following, but then to go on and immediately have the highest success you've ever had in your career, it really shows that the impact of online perception on actual reality is virtually non-existent and everyone who legitimately thought that doja cat of all people her career was going to be over because people were mad on twitter i think they're severely overestimating the power that this perception has on reality with or without us talking about her doja cat kind of just persists i also think that doja cat deserves a wee bit of credit for at least some of this objectively speaking this 
entire thing has pretty much been some of the greatest album promo I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm a very boring person and I get excited by marketing, and this has been a blast. Specifically referring to the way she was able to use the controversy in her music videos to flip this whole Satan thing on his head, it's honestly kind of astonishing that the people calling her out didn't realize they were just being used in a viral marketing campaign. Like she made it so obvious from the beginning by naming her album Hellmouth and turning all the album covers red before paint the town red dropped. This was also clearly laid out. There's a saying that goes advertising is what you pay for, but publicity is what you pray for. And whether she was praying to Jesus, Satan, or the music industry gods, the excessive amount of free publicity she was able to get from millions and millions of people on TikTok picking apart her every single, is probably worth more advertising than she could have ever paid for. A couple weeks before Paint the Town Red even dropped, she said the following in an interview. My philosophy around my work has become more apparent over recent times because I've been very inspired by hatred and outrage culture. It's something I will be reflecting on in my upcoming projects. I will never cease to be amused by the irony of thinking that you cracked some grand conspiracy because Doja Cat's cake has a triangle on it, but you don't realize that your very reaction and thought process is actually being used by Doja Cat in a conspiracy to sell more of her albums. Honestly, in many ways, this video kind of wrote itself. Now to wrap things up, I've seen people say everything from Doja Cat is having some sort of manic episode to like Doja Cat is intentionally trying to sabotage her career. And I think that these statements overlook the one thing that's become really clear in this video. And that is that Doja Cat is very consistent in her inconsistency. I don't think that's an inherently good or bad quality. I think it's neutral and it just has the potential to be good or bad. But either way, it makes things a lot less perplexing than they seem. Since I can't skip ahead through time and tell you that this story ends with the picture perfect, predictable ending of Doja Cat getting the number one album, instead, Allow me to skip back one more time. If I had to pick a favorite Doja Cat song, it would actually be her 2019 track, Rules. While not her most popular song, I think it's one of her best, and it has a line that I think about a lot sometimes. Aw, all of y'all was wrong. Talking about I fell off, y'all ain't even get on. Even before her big break with Say So, Doja Cat has always seemed acutely aware of the difference between playing the game and being part of the game. And for better or for worse, Doja Cat is usually the one playing. Instead of downplaying the benefits of celebrity like many people in her position, she kind of just toys with the whole idea instead, much like a cat. And I personally think it makes her one of the more interesting pop stars out right now. Now, this doesn't excuse her from legitimate criticism because as you've seen, there have been issues with her statements in the past and something tells me there will be issues with her statements in the future as well. But if I had to sum up my opinion on Doja Cat, I'd say that for every statement she gives, there is a grain of truth amidst a salt shaker of nonsense. And though this approach doesn't work in every scenario, it's pretty darn entertaining when it does. In conclusion, if you have a problem with anything in this video, just remember I said what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. Darn it, now it's stuck in my head. Just like the demons, she got me. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for the support if you happen to make it this far. And as always, I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.